makes a good WWE Elite action figure? Let's discuss it. So yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, on my Instagram page, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, go definitely do that at my damn toys as it is on the channel here, all one word all together there. So definitely go follow me over there. Sometimes I post random polls on my story. You know, we always put, you know, fix ups and customs and all kinds of stuff from the channel that we do here on the channel over there, as well as extra stuff that you may not see here on the channel. It is over on the Instagram page as well as Twitter. So yesterday on my Instagram story, I actually uploaded a, a questions thing. You know, you can do the questions thing on your stories first let's let's talk about the shirt real quick the old school triple h t-shirt holy christ this is one of my favorite shirts that i own the sleeves are hacked off because i wear it to the pool and out you know stuff like that but I love this shirt. This is probably my favorite Triple H t-shirt design of all time. That is just so sick. So iconic. Which kind of plays into today's video, which I'll get into. But yesterday, guys, I posted up what is the best WWE Elite figure of all time. I didn't say favorite. I'm pretty sure I said what is the best WWE Elite ever. What's the best WWE Elite of all time? I got tons of responses. I wrote out all of the answers here, and I tallied them up. And I was actually shocked by some of the responses. Some of them I kind of figured. And I'm actually probably going to make a bracket and upload that on my story so if you guys would like to see the bracket and the results and see what ends up being the best all time according to the people that viewed and voted on my story we will do that and i'll probably even make a video of the top five best ever and i may do my personal top five as well we'll have to see about that because just because it's the best ever to everybody else doesn't mean it's mine and that's pretty much what a wwe figure is man like of course you have ones that are overwhelming majority people are going to vote for but then you know it all comes down to my personal preference like if i think that that this fan takeover Christian is the best WWE elite of all time. You you can't tell me any different. You know what I'm saying? Like that's it's all personal preference. However, I am obsessed with statistics and analytics and things of that nature. So I'm always interested to dive into these things and find out what the best is or what is the best. You know, the Michael Jordan, the Kobe, the LeBron debate. I love things like that, and I like to break it down and see people's opinions and you know what would sway this this way and all that. So today I figured we could cover what makes a WWE Elite good or what makes it the best or whatever. What do these figures on my list have in common? And the one thing that I've really noticed or what the biggest thing about a WWE Elite that makes it good or the best is I feel like the iconicness or the nostalgia or the moment in history it takes you back to. So what I would say is let's just pick off a figure off this list. One of a lot of people's favorite figures is the Elite 16 Punk. I think a lot of people love that figure because of how iconic it is. Not only is it just a good figure in general, but you know how iconic it is. You know, defining moments figures. Figures that take you back to a moment when you were sitting there watching the TV and you were just so, like, you know, it pulled emotions out of you and it, it replays in your head over and over like moments that you, you know, that genuinely made you excited and got you hyped to be a wrestling fan. Those are the figures that I think make good figures and what makes things the best. I think that's the number one factor. Like, if they were to, like, I think it was, like, a few months ago or when 2020 just started, they did the best figure of the decade. Like, some random person or poll did the best figure of the decade, and the best figure of the decade was the Defining Moments Macho Man. Now, I'm not hating on that figure. I think it's fantastic, but there's no way that's the best figure of the decade. Like, I just didn't agree with that. A lot of people were like, what? They actually did deemed it figure of the decade. I mean, can't take it. He gave one the thing, right? Which I'm guessing it'll be similar to my poll where, you know, he probably asked people what their favorite figure was and then he determined who, what figures were named the most and then he did a tournament and then obviously the defining moments, Macho Man probably won the bracket, which doesn't deem it the figure of the decade, but I guess in that instance it did, which whatever figure wins right here will be the best figure of all time according to my story and who viewed it, but not everybody in the world viewed it. So you, you know what I'm saying? Or every WWE Elite figure fan didn't view my story, so it's not an official thing, which, you know, it, it just makes it fun, right? So, I will be doing that. Definitely go follow me on Instagram so that you can get in on that tournament. I don't know when I'll start that. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. I don't know, but it's very fun nonetheless. But outside of the nostalgia factor and figures, you know, moments in history or moments in wrestling history that just are so cool to see replicated in action figure form, but there's other things that add to it, right? Like, you can have a figure of your favorite. Say you're, say you're the biggest John Cena fan in the universe, 
and they released the Ultimate Edition John Cena, like the one that's coming out right now, the Ultimate Edition 10 John Cena. Well, say the head sculpts look nothing like John Cena. Say the t-shirt wasn't accurate. Say the sleeves were like cut off and they weren't even a real shirt. And say the articulation was absolute crap or the just every single one of them had a loose waist or the details, of it left the chain gang logo off the shorts or something like that. So those things play a role as well. It's not just this moment, oh, this is this figure from this moment. It's also how good is the head sculpt? It's also how fun is it to pose around and play around with? It's also what accessories does it come with? Does it capture that moment in time perfectly to where why you know it makes it the absolute best? So I've nailed it down to a few different things that make a WWE Elite figure good or the best. What makes a good WWE Elite? You got moment. We've discussed that a little bit. You've got head sculpt. I think head sculpt is very very important. If a figure doesn't look like the if if a figure doesn't look like the person, why the hell would you want it? You know, it's like at the end of the day, I guess it's not all that bad, but you want it to look like the guy. At least in today's day and age, maybe back in the day, you know, it was just, oh, I got a figure of Stone Cold Steve Austin. This is amazing. But in today's realm, I think it's got to look like the guy. Posability, as far as I'm concerned, man, if I can't move the figure, which is why I absolutely can't stand basic figures, if I can't move your figure around, man, I don't want it. You know, I do, I, like it drives me up the wall. I'm trying to find a figure that I don't like right here. Like, I love this John Cena figure, but I will say it's not the most fun to pose around. Like, the ankles are all kind of wanky danky. You got some weird stuff going on. Like, the legs aren't the most posable, but I do love John Cena, and this figure is very good. I just hate the ankles, how they, like, rotate and get off-centered and stuff like that, and his legs aren't the best. However, this Rey Mysterio right here is the opposite. It feels amazing in the hand. This is why Rey Mysterio Elites are very good, especially the modern-day ones, the new top picks right here. Figure feels incredible in the hand. Like, you can pose him around. Like, he can do all the things. He doesn't get loose. He's on ball joints. He can flip and nip, and nobody cares, you know? It's just a fantastic figure. So, that is another thing that I think is huge, at least for me. Like, a figure can pose around. Like, not only does it capture the moment, not only does it look like the guy, but can it pose around and do all the things you need it to do? Not just sit it up on the shelf and chill, but can I fed with it? Can I pose it around and do cool things with it and not want to choke myself? So, that's another thing. And then you have to get into the accessories part of the bag. I think that accessories are huge. You know, if it comes with a cloth accessory, that's going to upgrade it. If it comes with a championship that's iconic, that's going to upgrade it. If it goes hand in hand with that, if it comes with a specific mask, or if it comes with, you know, those are also very important things. And then I want to say, like, I feel like packaging plays a role. I feel like people like older figures, like, like Elite 16 CM Punk. That's just a beautiful figure mock because of the packaging. Like, I loved that packaging. I, uh, I'm not big on today's packaging. I feel like it's very stale. It's a lot like WWE television. It's just very repetitive. It kind of looks the same, which reminds me, I may have some news tomorrow regarding new packaging and stuff, so that will be interesting. I actually have some stuff. Steve from Mattel actually answered some questions for us, so we're going to get on there and probably dive into that. But like AEW figures, I feel like their packaging is superior, maybe just because it's more new and fresh, but WWE elites have had some great packaging, but I feel like they've also had some packaging that I don't like. I think ringside exclusives have a lot of great packaging as well, which I think adds to the flavor of a figure, but especially if you're a mock collector, like of course, if you're going to crack it out of the packaging anyway, but it, it, it says something, like the WrestleMania cash-in Toys R Us Seth Rollins. I don't know what it is, man. I adore that figure. I love the head sculpt. I love the moment. I love Seth Rollins. I'm actually surprised that a lot of people didn't vote for that one, but its packaging was amazing. I used to have that figure mock. I caved in and I opened it. I really want another one mock. It just looks so good. Like, if you own that figure, man, like, it's just one that you can look at in the packaging and be like, man. And you ever thought about why the hell do we even like that or why why do we do that, you know? Like, it wasn't enough to see it live on TV and be like, damn, that was an epic moment. But I guess it's like you want to be reminded of that moment, so you want that. You want Seth Rollins printed out in plastic form inside of a casing shell that represents that moment and you put it up on the wall and you want to relive that moment over and over. Maybe that's also what makes a WWE figure good is the ability to look at that figure and kind of look at it as a time capsule or like a memory. Kind of like you're looking at a photograph of that wrestler in that time when you viewed that guy, how you felt in that moment takes you back and I think that is why we love action figures in general is because you know you look up. I do this 
same thing with shoes, you know? When I collect shoes or I get new shoes of my favorite players and, you know, Kobe's and things of that nature, you look at that shoe and it kind of takes you back in time to when you saw that athlete or that person wear that shoe and where you were and what you were thinking and how you felt about it. And I think it's like figures are time capsules. That's kind of what I guess I'm getting to and what another thing that kind of ticks off of what makes a WWE figure so great. This video got a lot deeper than I thought it would. However, it's a very interesting fact and I wanted to sit down and talk about it a little bit because I asked what the best WWE elite of all time was and then it kind of just sent me down this rabbit hole of all this crazy thinking, but yeah. I think that's what makes a WWE figure good. And that's why you see certain figures over and over again. Because if they were popular, if they were big at the moment, if everybody kind of felt in unison, you know, this was a great time in wrestling. This is a great time in my life. This is a great time for wrestling in general. And then that figure gets made from that moment and it puts that image in your head. Every time you look at that figure, you think of how good it was, how great it was, what you felt in that moment of wrestling. I love that guy. This is when he won the championship and that gets replicated in figure form, then BAM! Man. Anyways, guys, I think that's what makes a WWE figure good. If you guys want to know the results of that poll and what figures were on that poll, let me count the figures real quick. There's 14 figures. I feel like I need to round it up to 16. I need to grab a couple more off the list there and then put them in a 16-man bracket and run that thing. I think that's the only way to do things. Yeah. I think that's literally the only way to do it. So I'll probably do that. You guys can see. We'll see what the upsets are and stuff. But follow me on Instagram, man. My damn toys. We're going to cover it. And let me know what you think makes a WWE figure good. And if you would like to, comment down below what you think the best WWE elite of all time is. But I'm getting out of here, guys. Let's get into our random shout out. This video was kind of crazy, but I enjoyed it. I like sitting down and kind of just diving into all the ins and outs and weird things about collecting sometimes. But do you agree with me? Do you think figures are time capsules? Do you think that, you know, that's why we love action figures? Do you think it's just, oh, I like John Cena. I want him in action figure form. I don't know. It's just weird, right? It's kind of like you're living through somebody else or something. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And this shout out is going to go to John Ayala who says, if the AEW and rivaled figures are hard to find, imagine how hard it will be to find the AEW game when it gets to the store. Scalpers will probably want 400 to a thousand for it on eBay. And there may be some truth to that, but you gotta think that like most games nowadays are available online and in the PlayStation Store. I'll probably be able to just download it whenever. And I feel like games are pretty much widely available. However, if they want like a hard disk, nice copy with the film over it, you could be onto something, Brad. I could see that being a thing where, you know, people want the, the first edition of the game in the encased, you know, plastic wrap or whatever and the niceness of the thing. I could see that being a thing, so you may be onto something, but I don't know. With the availability of download and digital and online and all that stuff, I don't know how true that will be, but I could see that being a thing, especially when the when it first releases. Yeah, I could probably see that being a thing, but and for the hardcore collectors, absolutely. But huge shout out to you, man. Thank you guys so very much for the comment. Let me know what makes a figure good or garbage. Psych, I know what makes a figure garbage. Basics. Don't cross the line like basics. You cross the line. I've been